So what we've done right now is we've written posts. This example of this particular blog over here, vmcinc.net, as an example, this has a section, this is WordPress also, um, vmcinc.net, it has uh, a home screen, it has news on the side, these are widgets, we'll talk about this stuff later, but it's got a design and it's got content, pictures, ads, etc. And it's got a section of home about contact blog. So what we've just been writing has been blog content. But on this particular site, the blog is not the main thing. It's a little bit of about information. There's some news items. There is recent posts at the bottom, but still it has a whole section for blog. And all the blog articles show up right here. So then there's read more and all of that. Well, there's also a contact page. You go to contact, and there's a contact form. You go to about. There's about the company right there. So uh, this is the thing we'll talk about now. Pages. About page, contact page. WordPress has posts. WordPress has pages. So posts are related to the blog. <laughs> Posts are related to the blog. We can make a note here. Posts. Blog articles. So written on a regular basis. Posts are written on a regular basis. Once a month, once a week, ten times a year, whatever. They're written out on a regular basis to help you with your SEO. Po uh, pages. Um, these are static screens on your site. Don't usually change. You've written that contact page. You've designed that contact page. Why is it going to change again next month? Why are you going to update your contact page? You really only would do it if you have a different email, if you have a new address. I don't know. You're not going to change a page very often. That about page also, you're going to write that about info about your business, but it's not going to really change. That history didn't really change. Other things about the company probably didn't change. And so the search engines are not going to care too much that these pages change. The search engines are going to care that posts are added to the site. That's what are the changes that the search engines will really look at. Both together. WordPress calls them articles, which is confusing. because We've been saying articles for posts. I wrote it right there. But for whatever reason, internally, WordPress calls them both articles. Um, so technically, one's posts, one's pages. But even the word pages is, is, is such a generic word, I can easily say, let's go to your blog page. That kind of makes sense. Let's look at that uh, blog page about the pecan recipe. It's a, it's a post, not a page, but the word is so generic, even posts. Let's go look what you've posted on the about page. You know, these terms are so generic that they just run into each other. But technically, to be educated about it, a post is on the blog, a page is any other page, any other screen. Over at VMC Inc., we see that home page contact page, about page, this is not going to change anytime soon, neither is the contact. The home page is going to have things that change, like this stuff won't change, but news are going is going to update once in a while when there's something new. The articles change themselves. These can be changed at some point, but everyone loves this one, so we probably won't. Uh, this one's fun too. And there's a footer and all of that, and so um, Let's let's work work with that now. Click cl first. Click on pages. If you click on pages, that's the same thing as hovering over pages and selecting all pages. Same thing. And so far, we got one sample page. What I want to do is create a home page and an about page to start off with. So at the top, very easily here, we have under pages, add new, or under pages, add new, or under new, 
add a page. So there's more than one place to do the same thing. Same thing with posts. I can hover over pages and select Add New. If I'm looking at all my posts, I could add a new post. And wherever I see this new button, I can add a new post. So many places to do the same thing, but we're going to add a new page. So under Pages, Add New. The screen looks like 99% the same as a post, but it's different in a few key ways. We'll explain in a moment. But first, what's a good title for this screen we're about to create? Home. This is going to be the home page. It could be home, welcome, start page, index, whatever. It can be changed later. For the moment, we'll just call it home. This is our home page. It's going to create a new address. If that doesn't show up right away, just click on the editing area and it should show it to you. If it doesn't, if it still doesn't show it to you, don't worry, it'll it'll eventually show itself here. But that's the web address that you're about to get out of this creating this page. And here I'll say something like welcome. Oh, let me do it instead like this, a little tagline. Uh, family owned bakery in the heart of East Lake. Welcome to Victor's Bakery, blah blah blah. I'm not going to go into detail and in adding pictures and all of that. I'm just going to add some content, some gibberish, some. I have the editing tools that I saw previously with posts as well as the text in view so I can add any code that I want, any embed, etc. The publish box on the top right is exactly the same, but now other different things, oh, featured image is also exactly there. The same. But what's different is something called page attributes. This wasn't there for posts. <coughs> posts had, I think, formats, categories, and tags. Page attribute, parent, no parent or sample page. This will make more sense later. When we create the shopping cart, we're going to have a section that is shop. And then under that, we will have uh, shopping cart, uh, your account, etc. Your account and shopping cart are part of the main shop section. So those would be children of the parent shop. Home shouldn't have any, shouldn't be a child of anything. This is saying, what's the parent element of this? So again, if I was creating checkout screen, it would be a child. I would set the parent to shop. The big higher level is shop, and below it is the checkout. That's the relationship there. But in this case, nothing. I don't need to set any parent. The home page is the highest one. Don't worry about order. This is for how do they show up on your menu. We'll talk about menus in detail later, so don't worry about that. Depending on your theme, you may also get an extra box here that says template. Right now, all of the pages in my design look the same. If I go over to archives or if I go over elsewhere, they all have the same design. But depending on the theme, it may have created templates within the design, within the theme. And if they did, they would be listed here. So there could be a template called Contact Page Template. So if I'm creating a brand new page called Contact, and I set it to the Contact Template, it could have a different design. Maybe a design that focuses on showing a map, where the font is different. Maybe I create, I'm creating a page called Shopping Cart and I have a template called checkout screen and I attach the checkout screen to the shopping cart page and it gets a different design maybe different columns, different fonts, whatever. This one doesn't have anything special no extra templates, so nothing to, to show. Screen options also has custom field discussion slug author, we've seen this before same idea as before, you could put in you can change things here The only thing really I want to do right now is create a brand new page called home. That'll be our home page. 
then content, just hit publish. This is going to be our home page. Let's visit site. Hmm, I don't see it. I created a home page, I published it, and I want it to be the home page. As I said, this is not the default behavior of WordPress. The default behavior is to show a blog. I want to change it, like VMC Inc., that it shows a home page content. I need to change the default. We touched on it briefly last time, and now we can actually do it. So I'm going to say here again default WordPress show blogs on the home page. We could instead do a static home static front page <coughs> set a home page again the terminology page set a home page as the home page we created a home page we want it to be the home page we'll do that right now step one create a home page Step two, set it in the settings. We couldn't do this last week. We didn't have a home page to work with. <clears throat> last week I mentioned where to do it, and I'll show again right now. Last week we could not do this. We didn't have a home page. We just created a home page. Let's set it as the home page. Specifically, you go back to your dashboard, and it's under settings. reading, set it in the settings, which is dashboard, settings, reading, under the dashboard, settings, reading, front page displays, your latest blog posts. That's why my latest article takes over. I want a static page. And the static front page will be the home page we just created. This doesn't let you create one at this moment. You have to create one first, and then you can set it. Front page displays a home page. Don't forget to hit save at the bottom or this won't this won't take effect. Front page displays a static page, home. Make sure you set home there. Just the bottom click save and then visit site. Or save changes. Save changes and then visit site. There we go. Home page, home, family owned bakery, blah blah blah. Home page. My recent posts went off there. How to bake a pecan pie, hello world. The blog stuff went off over there. The home page page shows up there. Yes. Okay, so I'm doing all that and it still doesn't, doesn't let me uh, choose home and just say sample. One thing you missed before you walked in was you needed to first go to pages and add a new page called home. You needed to create yes, home. Did you publish it? Oh. <laughs> All right, so um, people often ask, oh, I've seen WordPress sites that do this, but mine doesn't do that. How do I make it do that? We saw here that it's a little bit of a process. Uh, create the page, and then you have to set it to be the home page. Just because you call it home doesn't mean it'll be the home page. You have to set it.
So, we get that there. Which isn't showing? On your post? Mm -hmm. Did you click the name of the article? All right, just one moment. Okay, so um, at the beginning of the day, we had the practice of setting up WordPress again, an empty site. We created the site, and then we um, worked with with posts and the details of posts and such. And we're touching on pages, which are similar, but it's about static content. Um, I want to talk about we're getting close to the end of the day and what I want to talk about is all of this work that we've done so far I don't want to do it again from scratch next time I don't want to create the home page again and I don't want to create the all of that I, I don't want to start over next time we're gonna talk about how to save this to be able to take it with us so that we don't have to do it again next week <coughs> thanks so that we don't have to start over next week so that we've already got this set up exactly as it is at this point this is going to be then introducing you a brand new concept here. I've got a new handout, a new handout to archive our project, to take it with us. Because right now our project is made out of a folder with a bunch of folders and a bunch of files all over the place. I have a handout where we're going to use a plugin to compress it all down to two files. Then we can take those two files with us. So you can take what you've worked with here and do it at home or vice versa. You can work with what you have at home and bring it here. Or I can give you a copy of mine. Let's say yours is not working and it's going to be too hard to figure out. I can give you a copy of my site and take it from that point. And later on when we get to this at the end of part two, that'll also be the method about how can we take this site from our computer onto the real internet on my GoDaddy account, on my Bluehost account. It's going to be the same process for all of those use cases. So let me remind you where the network is, because I've got a new handout for you, instruction number four. We're still going to look at three soon, but let's look at instruction four. Let's go to computer window on the desktop. Let's go back to the classroom data, drive Z, because it's zebra. We'll go back to our class, Campus WordPress 1, open that, and I've got a new file in there for you, number 4, Campus eCommerce 4, archiving WordPress. The printer's off, so you can print later, but copy that to your desktop. Let's take a quick read at it, read to it, read with it, and we'll uh, then we'll, we'll do it. So copy instruction 4 to your desktop and then open it. In general, my handout has two sections, archiving your site and then resurrecting your site. One is, the archive site part will be that we're going to compress, we're going to confine everything for easy transport as a perfect copy and archive. Then, next week, I don't want to start all over from scratch. I want to start from where we ended right now. We're going to do that resurrect site. I would recommend for you to try to do this at home. If you don't, that's fine. We're going to do it together next time. Right now, first, together, we're going to do this first part. We're going to back up our site. We're going to archive it. So again, all the steps are written here. I've taught this class years. It works. If you're getting lost, I'll help you, of course, but it's in my handout. So step one, in your WordPress dashboard, we need to add a new plugin. I'll explain what plugins are in detail later. But a plugin is like a mini app that gives you more features. There is no good default built-in backup tool for WordPress, but there's hundreds of really good alternatives out there. One of them is the one from my handout. 
we need to add a new plugin. So hover over plugins, click add new. We'll have a deeper discussion on plugins later, but this is the plugin directory, top right corner, search plugins. We're searching for a particular plugin. Which one? My handout says duplicator. Search for duplicator. You should find the one published by Life in the Grid, version 1.1.10. So at the top right corner in the plugins screen, search for duplicator. Press enter. That'll search the directory. I get mine says 1330 results. So my handout further says you should see the one by life in the grid. If it's not that company, it's the wrong one. I don't know about it. Actually now they just updated it 14 hours ago. That's good. So again we'll have a deeper discussion on what plugins are and all of that later. But we need this plugin, which is a highly reviewed, highly regarded plugin that will help us make a perfect copy of our site. The built-in system to WordPress is pretty terrible. So there's this one that's pretty great. It's free. You have to, as my handout says, then you have to click install now. Go ahead and hit install now. It's going to connect back to wordpress.org. Now notice my handout is already out of date. My handout says duplicator 1.1.10 the new one is 112 that's fine it's the newest one I didn't check it to make sure if they changed it but if if you're looking for 1.10 the new one is 1.12 so don't worry that that's a little discrepancy click install now afterward make sure to select activate plugin we've installed it but it's not active yet so make sure you select Activate Plugin. You now have a new dashboard item, so a new item on the left menu. Duplicator. Click it. You see on the left side at the bottom, you've got a brand new item, Duplicator. So this is a brand new plugin with more features. You can see it there. It added something new to your WordPress. A bunch of options and such we'll look at later. Just hover or click on duplicator and select packages. It's the first item. So this can make copies of your site, perfect copies of your site. And unfortunately, you cannot simply go. Remember at the beginning of the day, we we put our WordPress folder into the www folder. Unfortunately, you cannot simply drag that folder to your flash drive and walk out the door. That is not going to be a, the, the correct copy of your site. Some of the pieces of the site are in other folders. So the whole point of this plugin is to gather it all so that you can take it with you and to bring it back to life next week. So it says there's no packages, there are no archives, there are no backups yet. What do we do then? It says click create new button to build a package, and so does my handout. Click create new tab at the top, or button, create new at the top right. Uh, this is going to automatically put today's date and the name of your site. You can change that if you want. I'm going to leave it. And I know most of us are probably used to writing a date more like this. You know, uh, 06, 21, 2016. Or if you use dashes or slashes, whatever. What I mean is, most of us in the US are used to writing our dates like this. Month, day, year. I would recommend get used to writing it as year month date. The reason is you're going to have a copy of your site today. You're going to have a copy of it next week, the next week after that. If we call it 
6, 21, 16. And next week we'll create 6, 27, and so forth. When you have a, in your flash drive all of your backups, they're actually going to be out of order. All of the 6's will be together. All of the 07's will be together. All of the 01's will be together. The computer is going to organize it by a number, not a, not a month. The sixth month, the first month, etc. If we get used to first putting a year, all of the backups of 2016 will be alphabetized together. And then the months and then the days. If you put it this way, all of the sixes together. And it doesn't matter 2016, 2012, 2017. All of the Junes will be together. So that's kind of a minor thing, but it's a big thing. Because as more backups that you have, you're going to lose track of them. So I'm just opining here, don't change that. It's 2016, 06, 21. They will all get put into perfect order. My handout does say, uh, you may change it, today's date, etc. With notes, you can add your own note about what's in the duplicator archive. At the top right, do you see a little note button? If you click there, there's a spot right here for you to then write a note about what's in this archive. You're going to have a bunch of backups. Well, what's in this backup? We will have a deeper discussion later, but I'm going to say here, um, wrote a new blog post, added a home page. This is notes. This is optional. I'm going to say to do. What's coming next to do is add a custom menu. So these are just optional notes about what's in the archive. Only I will see it. No one else will see it. But when I'm working with 10 of these copies, these notes are very valuable because it helps me understand what's in the site. The backup. Leave the other defaults and click Next. Duplicator plugin will scan your site, and if there are problems, it'll tell you. Mine says everything's good. There could be a problem with the server. Usually none of this goes wrong, especially if you're on LAN, if you're on localhost, because that's usually no problem on your own computer. If you're doing this off a Bluehost server, perhaps there might be a problem. And if there's a problem, you can click the triangle for it to try to give you an answer. This could be a technical problem, but the help that it gives you might, might help. Uh, you click next. You click next. Yes? I didn't change the date of the legend next. It says the value seems to be the power. You didn't change the date, but did you change anything else? All right, so on this screen right here, what it could tell you over here about your file size, if you've got a really big site, it may take longer to archive. Um, yes? Okay, let me help you in just one moment. So it could be uh, a really big site, and it uh, could be very slow to make a backup. So you could have a good result, you could have a warning, or you could have an error. If it's good, we're ready to go. If it's a warning, we can proceed, and it'll probably be okay. And if we've got an error, it won't let us proceed. I, all of mine say good, so I'm going to click Build. With that process, it's going to copy every file, everything to one
with my hand out and tells us what to do next. I, I got a package complete. Sometimes there's an error here. If there's an error, there should be a, a note, but I got all good. Hopefully, everyone wants it to. All right, so what this screen is about, it says, we just backed everything up. In my case, it took six seconds, 6.40 seconds. If it was a big site with a lot of pictures and a lot of content, it could easily take minutes. My handout then says, it's going to scan it. After the build is complete, you will get two files, an installer and an archive. That's what we're seeing here. This is going to give us two files. It's going to give us a special file, which we will use next week to bring the site back to life. And the whole site is compressed down to this one zip <coughs> file, this one zip file, 10.88 megabytes. So everything about the site is compressed in here. You never want to unzip that file. You want to keep it zipped as is right here. And when we come back next week, we will use the installer to bring it back. You don't want to double click that installer either. It's a technical thing we will do together. It is in my handout, however. So we get two things, the installer and the archive. Click to download the installer and the archive. Depending on your web browser, I'm going to click that, and right away in my browser, it, it downloaded it right away to my desktop. I'm in Chrome. It might be in Firefox, Internet Explorer. It might be slightly different. It might automatically download it. It might ask you, open it or save it. You want to save it. I'm going to click the save link to my archive. Again, in my case, it automatically downloaded it to the desktop. You might get a pop-up that says open or save. Again, save it. Click the save button. If you're in Firefox, instead of it downloading here in the corner, most likely you got a big blue arrow that appeared on the top right corner for a moment. That was your download button. In my case, it downloaded to the desktop. They, they quote unquote downloaded. Uh, so click download. One is called installer.php and contains the instructions to bring the site back to life. The other has whatever date and probably some gibberish dot zip and contains everything about your site. Do not unzip it. So on my desktop, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing installer.php, don't double click it. You're going to see installer.php. And I see that one, the one with the huge name, 2016 Victor Bakery, blah, 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 dot zip. Those two files are a perfect copy of my site. My handout then says, create a folder with today's date and put both of those files in there. So in that folder, that's what you're going to take with you. I'm going to, in a moment, put a copy of my site in the network folder. A copy of mine, if you want a copy of my site. But because they downloaded to the desktop, on the desktop somewhere I'll click right-click, New, Folder. You can put today's date, but again, I'm going to get used to writing the date as 2016-06-20. All my backups will be in perfect order. If I'm calling it 6-20-2016, all sixes will be together from this year, last year, who knows? Then all sevens from this year, last year, who knows?
So making a folder with this format, I recommend is better. Yes? Can you email this to yourself? Yes, you, you can, but sometimes the email providers are scared of zip files because mm -hmm. that's a way sometimes to transfer viruses. Mm -hmm. So try to email it to yourself, and if it lets you, great. If it doesn't, it might tell you, we cannot zip, you cannot send yourself a zip file mm -hmm. for your protection. So if you can't send it to yourself, no big deal. The work that I'm doing right now, I'll give it to us next week so we don't start over again. We're going to start from where I ended up with. And then next time, remember to, to bring a USB. So I made a folder with today's date. I'm going to move the zip file into the folder with today's date. And I'm going to move the installer PHP file into that. Let me help you in just one moment. So this whole folder, I'm going to copy it over to my flash drive. I have my flash drive plugged in. I've got a folder on my flash drive for it, and I'm going to drag it to my flash drive. And so now I have a perfect copy of all of the work we did today, which we will use next week to bring the site back to life. And I'm also putting a copy of that into, into the network folder. This is a tricky thing. That's why I wrote it down, and I'll do people help in, in just a moment. But to finish my thought, um, this is the process we will do at the end of every day. So we'll do it again together next time. I don't want to start all over every time. I want to work with what we've worked with, archive it. Then the following week, we will do the second part here, resurrecting it. We'll bring the site back to life, and we'll have a perfect copy as how we leave it today. Um, we'll do this together, of course, next week. But at this point, I'm going to wrap up the main lecture to help people in lab time. Um, try to see if you can do this. If not, call me over, and we'll have a little lab time until 9.30. I'll turn the printer back on, and we'll wrap it up in the next week. We'll bring the site back to life and learn more things, such as custom menus, plugins, widgets, all of that stuff. Question? Let me post the notes also, and. Um,